Uh, hi and uh, welcome to the slideshow. It's a presentation of some butterfly pictures that I took uh, while guiding a birding trip to Colombia from February 8th to uh, 27th, 2014. Uh, we're mostly in the western central Andes, uh, but we started in the eastern Andes at uh, Pedro Palo, not too far from Bogota, where I took this picture on the very first day of the trip. It's a beautiful pair of Sirota Myrtea. Um, it was a wonderful group of bird watchers. They didn't mind even on the first day that I got distracted by a butterfly. They were great throughout the trip, uh, putting up with my little uh, distractions. Uh, that evening we flew to Pereira and drove up to the Otun Kimbaya Reserve and spent the rest of the, or spent the, the next day there. Uh, basically walking down this beautiful gravel road. It was a sunny morning, but uh, we were busy with birds. would have been great to uh, spend a bit more time on the butterflies, uh, like this Epiphile Chrysites Chrysites that I couldn't get a ventral picture of, but uh, it's an ice bug anyway. Um, and I also had this Elzunia Humboldt, which is a very common one in Colombia, but it's always nice to see. Um, after lunch that day, I had about an hour our free time. Of course, it started raining, um, but I was still able to find this uh, Mesosemia mevania. I got the ventral and then flushed it, and it very nicely sat up under a leaf so I could get the dorsal side too. Beautiful, beautiful eye mark there. Um, then next morning, as usual on a birding tra trip, we were uh, rushing off to another site. We drove up to Apia. Look for yellow-headed mannequin, and uh, on the way back to the to the car, I found this uh, very nice dysmorphia, the dysmorphia mirandula discoloria, um, and I even was able to grab them and shoot this, uh, this nice dorsal side, which is very important often in this genus for, for helping to identify them. Uh, lunch that day was right at the continental divide, the uh, crest of the Western Andes. Uh, about 2100 meters elevation. Uh, around our lunch spot I found this, uh, this Adolfo Olynthia. So we got both sides of him as well. And uh, we then had two full days at uh, the Montezuma Road which is a wonderful uh, birding and butterflying site on the west slope of the western Andes, one of the wettest parts of the world. We had two dry days though which was which is nice. Uh, basically the first day we started out walking quite near the, the highest part of the road. Uh, we got down to you know, about 2100 meters before I got my first butterfly picture. There's a Dysmorphia altus altus, which I was not able to catch unfortunately. And just a little lower down, I had this Pena petaloides muscosa, feeding on something, uh, something tasty there I guess. Um, and then uh, First real mystery of the trip, uh, Magnuptychia. There are a lot of very confusing species in this genus, a lot of undescribed ones too, so I don't know uh, where I'm going to go on the identification of this one. Um, even nicer little mystery later in the day was uh, Caristoides, uh, Rubii, I guess you call them, these, these grass skippers. They're mostly crepuscular, so this is a nice one to get as the, as the cloud sort of came in in the afternoon. Bouncing around the little little bird poops on the road. Uh, the next day we were at a little bit lower elevation. Uh, the first butterfly was Oxyoschistus puerta, one of the most common butterflies in the, the Montezuma Road. Saw lots of them, but I uh, was glad to get pictures of both sides of him as well. And then uh, my third dysmorphia of the trip. It's uh, Dysmorphia xyla xyla, which is a one I've come away from Montezuma Road previously with a poor picture of, so I'll get a really decent shot next time. Um, a little lower down, I had the Emesis Cypria. This is a quite a common, common and widespread metal mark I've had in on a lot of my trips. Um, and this is one that I almost certainly would have ignored normally on a birding trip, especially. It's a Hermeuptychia harmonia, I suppose. Um, there's a lot of confusion about this genus too. How to identify them? How to, uh, and even how many species there are. I think there's some debate over that. So, but um, you can see here, this one has sort of the wavy, 
wavy median line curving out almost if it's curving around these bigger bigger eye spots so I tend to call those harmonia I don't know if that's actually correct or not but that's what I use for now um, and then came by the butterfly of the trip this is about the view we had of this uh, this butterfly uh, my last trip to Colombia with butterflies when we were at the Las Tangaras Reserve which is a few hundred kilometers to the north of Montezuma Road uh, we had this view of them way up above the road we couldn't see really anything else on them we never had any idea what they were but uh, this one flew down and gave me a wonderful dorsal shot too turned out to be a Lucilella Aphrodita which is a a neat sounding name for a very interesting bug. Um, there are five species in this uh, Lucilella genus. They're all from Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru, so it's sort of a tropical Andean genus, I guess. It's from this tribe of, of metal marks. Uh, I think it's Simancini. Um, and I think they're generally sort of poorly known, probably poorly known butterflies. They're so this was definitely a trip highlight for me. Uh, such a such a beautiful bug and sort of a mystery from a previous trip sorted out. It was a very nice experience. Especially as some of them were we've been landing on our hats, they're acting very territorial right around the road there, so that was great. And a little lower down, had a fourth and final dysmorphia of the trip. This is a dysmorphia Boucharilla Santone, a clear wing mimic white they call it. Um your first clue it's not actually a clear wing um, could be that it has a has six fully functional legs all nymphalids including clear wings have a, have just a four functional legs and the front pair is sort of modified and not used as as legs maybe not used for much at all I'm not sure and the final bug from Montezuma is this Calimormus radiola jana which I seem to photograph every time I go there at the Rio Claro Bridge. Um, that's a very common species found in disturbed grassy habitats. So our next site was um, back in the central Andes again. This is at Rio Blanco. Um, this is a Pedaleoides baccara baccara, very common satyr there. It's the only butterfly I had there. The next uh, well, next day we were up in the Paramo, I didn't see any butterflies. Then we drove north through the dry Cauca Valley. Um, while we were looking for apical flycatcher in the late morning, I found this nice hair streak. Uh, it's Recoa meton, sometimes called the tiger eye hair streak. Um, you can see why. It's widespread and I think reasonably common, but this is my first decent picture, so I was pleased to get that one. Um, that was en route to the Urao area where we were to walk up to the dusky star front of the reserve. Um, just as we started the walk, there was a Eupticdoides uh, griefe right on the path. Didn't budge as I <laughs> moved in, got a really nice close up picture. Very nice, also a pretty common bug, especially in Colombia, but I was pleased to get that. Um, and the next day we went to probably the most beautiful site on the trip. It's uh, Paramo Frontino, which is a very, very, very steep uh, two or three hour walk above the above the lodge there, looking for some rare birds, but I was hoping there'd be some interesting butterflies too. It was a really beautiful paramo, lots of looming espaletia, uh, like this one that's being visited by uh, by my only dala of the trip, a dala skipperling. I think this is either dala agathocles or maybe lenda. Uh, it's a very difficult genus to, to identify. I did get a bit of a dorsal Unfortunately, not the hind wing, which had uh, two big yellow patches on it. And then, as you probably expect at uh, this elevation, about 3,500 meters and right above the tree line, uh, the fog rolled, rolled in around noon, but um, found this guy roosting up in the, on the top of a sort of moderate sized tree, well, four, <laughs> four or five meter tall tree. Um, I was taking really crappy telephoto pictures until Jack, one of the birders in the group, came along and uh, and pulled the whole tree down so the, the butterfly was right in front of me. I was able to get nice close pictures of it. It's a Catastricta ramus, uh, sorry, Catastricta semi Um I was even able to catch it thanks to Jack's help and 
getting the dorsal again is very important with the catastictas um, in terms of identifying them. Uh, the next day we walked back down to to the road. Um, it was a beautiful sunny morning, but uh, we were basically trying to move on out. I only had time for one butterfly on the way down, which is this worn uh, Penine Cisalia. They call them pen elephants, their hair streaks. Uh, really nice when they're fresh. This one's a bit worn, basking on that rock. Basically, to identify them to the species, um, it's basically genitalic. Very hard to, to do, I think, um, by anything you can take a picture of in normal circumstances. So, this is going to be a, a spa for a long time, probably. Uh, that afternoon, we, we drove to Hardin. It's a beautiful little town in the western Andes. And uh, while while the birds in the group were looking at these big beautiful Andean cock of the rocks point blank range, I photographed a little grass skipper that uh, I feel like I should be able to identify, but uh, they're, they're very difficult. It uh, looks familiar. So, um, the next, uh, next place that we went where I had butterflies was at Rio Claro, which is um, in foothill rainforest in the middle Magdalena Valley. A very nice, uh, very nice site. Just about 500 meters elevation. This was the first butterfly I found there, which is uh, Feles strigosa strigosa. Um, I was, I was trying to show show the group some pale-tailed barb throats. Band-tailed. It's band-tailed barb throat there. Um, and all of a sudden this guy popped up, which was, of course, much more exciting for me. I managed to snap off a quick picture before we before we all nailed the, the barbed throat. And then we spent about two hours without moving because the birding was so good. Um, just everything kept coming in. We did really well, got all the endemics we were looking for. Um, and then on the way back, it was hot, sunny, late morning, which means butterflies. Uh, there was this Memphis right beside the trail. Uh, which I photographed and then managed to grab. Unfortunately, he lost another chunk of his wing in the process, but uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that'll help to identify him eventually. Um, and then, about six meters up a tree fern, sitting this uh, this giant owl called uh, Caligo Atreus. Very beautiful. He was bigger than most of the birds we were seeing, I think. Um, but he was so high up and that thick trunk, even Jack couldn't pin that one down for me unfortunately because it would have been a spectacular butterfly to get a close picture of. Um, final butterfly for the morning was this Janatella uh, leucodesma. Um, saw several of them through the rest of the trip. I think it's a fairly common species. Um, at least in the northern part of Colombia. I think also in Central America. Um, and after lunch I had two hours of, of butterflying time which is bit of a treat. Um, one of the first things I found was uh, Orfe vatinius, a widespread ruby eye skipper. Um, and just after that I found a tiger wing which I think is a uh, Mechanitis polymnia. I'm not 100% uh, not sure of that. These are very tricky. Uh, a lot of them mimic each other but it's my best guess for now. Um, and speaking of mimicry, this is the famous uh, Heliconia serrato. This is uh, Guarica subspecies here. Um, Heliconia serrato is a huge range, and it basically mimics uh, mimics other, or it's in, involved in mimicry rings throughout its range with with other Heliconia species and uh, some places with some of the the other tiger wing uh, genera too. So. Uh, I got both sides of him. He was he was happy on this uh, this bait that was left behind by a by a thoughtful passing donkey. Um, and just up the trail, the beautiful beautiful hair streak Arawakas lincoides. It was a relief for me to find something different from Arawakas separata, which I is so common in Peru. Kept thinking I'd find something different, and they're all separata. So getting this one was a nice. Uh, Nice change. The the main difference seems to be in the um, in this black band and the relative width compared to the white band stuff. I think um, I think I've got it right anyway. Arawakas lincoides, and then uh, a moth fluttered by, uh, so I thought until it landed and resolved into an absolutely stunning little sirota. 
Sirota acanthus. Um, unfortunately, it's called simple Sirota butterflies of America. Um, you can actually sort of see why, I guess. The markings are relatively sort of simple, patchy, but uh, very, very beautiful. Um, yeah, definitely another trip highlight there. I love Sirotas. Um, which made this a very good 10 minutes because just down the trail I found another Sirota. This is a Sirota neglecta, um, which I have seen before, but any Sirota is always a treat, so I was really happy to get him. I even photographed him sort of from behind, show how he flares out those tails. Um, very interesting, interesting butterflies. This guy kept hopping up from the leaf litter to, to low leaves and, and shrubs, then back down to leaf litter. Not sure what he or, or she was up to. I don't know if she was laying eggs or something. Um, I got distracted by a little grass skipper. Uh, these guys are really difficult for me. Uh, they might be a Parphoris or, or maybe Vahilius, something along those lines anyway. Um, then I got uh, back in another one of my favorite families, Hair Streaks. Um, this is Calicopus uh, Trebula. Um, and right at the same creek crossing, I had another one that I think is different. If you look at the um, look at this sort of this sort of red filled area here is a uh, the classic mark for, uh, for for the Calicopus genus. And see how sort of pointed this one is, and relatively sort of small, triangular, and limited compared to this Tribula. So they're broad and rounded. That is, I think it's a different species, but uh, who knows? There could be a lot of variation here. Um, it's a very difficult group for, for identification too. So then finally it was time to get back to the birders. That was a very productive couple of hours though from a butterflying point of view. Um, but hopping around our cabins as, as we gathered was a, a Unica volumna called purple celled, nope, blue wing, blue celled, wow, <laughs> blue celled purple wing. Um, he was looking at our, our cabin walls for some reason. I guess there was something there he liked. Uh, it was a slow afternoon for for birds, um, but I was happy to get this uh, Mesosemia asa, second Mesosemia of the trip, and this sort of typical Mesosemia posture. Difficult to get a really pleasing dorsal picture, but it helped to identify it. There's the uh, the ventral side, and then just at dusk, as we were waiting for the oil birds to come out of their caves, um, had this very really nice Caristoides. Again, picking up bird poop, I guess that's what they do. <laughs> um, the next morning, it was raining, but uh, got one more butterfly from Rio Claro anyway, Eusilesia candaria. Very beautiful, and it was really slate gray above, so there were two of them displaying around. It was really, really very beautiful, having them uh, I'm chase around, flash those, those two colors at me. Um, unfortunately, the rain caused us to... Uh, well, it caused a landslide along the road to the airport. We <laughs> missed our flight, got rerouted through Bogota. It was really kind of a wasted day. Got into Minka at almost midnight. So uh, it was a tiring day, but uh, next morning we were at it again, working up the Santa Marta Mountains where most of the birds are endemic, and hopefully some of the butterflies are too. This one I think is a Pedaleoides, definitely a satyr of some kind. Um, beautiful orange band above but uh, never let me get a shot of the dorsal side and then just a little bit uh, further up the road had a, a flat a Selenorinus species these are hard to identify too I don't really know what the possibilities are it looks sort of like some of the uh, Songoensis subspecies but um, yeah they're very very hard to tell apart and waiting for some expert to help me out with that one hopefully um, an easier identification and a very pretty bug, but unfortunately not the best picture. This Chlorostymon simaethus, simaethus. Um, yeah, it's a widespread one up into Central America too, but a very beautiful guy. He wouldn't, uh, wouldn't close wings up for me to get a really nice picture. Besides, we were, of course, looking for birds again. Santa Marta wood star at that site. Um, the next day we were up at the high elevation, around 2,700 meters on the San Lorenzo Ridge. Almost every bird you see there is endemic, it seems, and I think this is actually an endemic butterfly too. It's the Sierra, Sierra Steroma polixo, um, which I've seen every time up there, but never seen anywhere else. So I think it uh, 
could well be a Santa Marta endemic. Um, then we sort of clambered up a, a hill beside the road to get a better view of these Santa Marta parakeets. They were successful in that and also finding some hilltopping butterflies. Um, they're both mysteries. There's a, a very nice hair streak. A couple of them on this hilltop uh, staying high on the bushes, but it's a reasonable picture. I think it should be identifiable at some point. And then um, also flying around the same area was a, a grass skipper, which I meant to get both sides of. Hopefully you can get an identification on that. It's got a few markings on the on the forewing anyway. Um, I spent the rest of the day basically just walking back down the hill to El Dorado. Um, first thing I saw was a Leptophobia elion elion. Of course I was hoping it would be some endemic, but it appeared to be the nominate subspecies. I was able to catch it and shoot the dorsal. Even the birders like to look at that bright yellow, uh, bright yellow dorsal side. Um, the rest of what I found for the day were all satyrs, um, starting with the Lasiophila sapatosa. As we ate our lunch, so I ate my sandwich quickly and chased it around and kicked at it until it finally um, cooperatively opened up for a few seconds. I was able to shoot this beautiful dorsal side. Um, and I have two mystery pedalioides that this yellow striped one and this sort of more patchy, patchy one with a white, white stripe and, and spots. Hoping there's a Santa Marta endemic or two among those. They're, they're high elevation species, so pretty good chance that there is an endemic there. Um, now this is a widespread one, Corades Enyo. Um, it also let me shoot the dorsal side, which is very beautiful. Um, that was it from the high elevation from Santa Marta. So the next day we worked our way down to uh, back down to Minca. Didn't get any butterflies in the morning, but uh, after lunch in Minca, I had a chance to look around the creek. Got this uh, this ground streak there. Um, yeah, it's a it's a challenge. Probably going to need some help identifying it. He was on the rocks in the creek, and then uh, another hair streak flitted by, and he was very cooperative. Um, this is a strime on Yohoa, which occurs right up into the right up into the states, but it's my first one, so I was happy to shoot it, especially because I got both sides of them. Then I thought I'd go back and check on that ground streak, and there was a different one there, I think. Um, look at these really sharp, sharp markings in the in that line. Uh, if you look at the uh, look at the previous ground streak I had, you've got a very it's very straight through there. So I think these are are indeed two different species, but I uh, need to confirm that. Um, that afternoon we walked out to Poso Azul, which is a little local tourist trap, little swimming hole. Um, nice birds on the way, but also this um, Melanus electron, which even the even the non birders had a or non butterflies, the birders <laughs> had a look at. It's a hard thing to ignore. Very beautiful as you hung on that route uh, overhanging the trail. Um, and then our last uh, our last birding site for the trip was up on the Guajira Peninsula in the desert, looking for some special birds there, and found one more very interesting butterfly. This is a uh, it's called Aricorus aerostratus. It's a it's a metal mark. I thought at first it was an nymphalid because uh, just has these uh, has four functional legs, two on each side. Um, but I guess it's uh, some metal mark can look like that at times. I guess depending on how they're sitting, or maybe it does have only four functional legs. I got a sort of poor vent uh, dorsal shot too. Uh, I was initially thinking this was some kind of checker spot or, or something, but uh, oh, definitely a very interesting metal mark. Um, yeah, so that's it. I hope you hope you enjoyed this first slideshow of mine. Um, it's a bit of an experiment, but uh, I enjoyed preparing it. And Leave me some comments if you have any idea about uh, some of the identifications, uh, if I made any mistakes, or if you can get any of those mysteries. Or just leave me a comment, let me know if you, if you enjoyed it or, or not. Um, yeah, thanks a lot and hope to make some more of these videos soon. Bye bye.